Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, How to Streamline Your Variant Classification Workflow with HGMD. I am Kaylee Baca of LabRoots, and I'll be your moderator for today's event. Today's educational web seminar is presented by LabRoots and brought to you by Kyogen. To learn more, visit kyogen.com. We encourage you to participate today by submitting any questions you may have during the presentation. To do so, simply type them into the Ask a Question box and click Send. We'll answer as many questions as we have time for at the end of the presentation. You may also submit any technical issues here as well if you have trouble seeing or hearing the presentation. I'd like to now welcome our speaker, Araceli Cuellar, PhD, Senior Field Application Scientist at Kyogen Digital Insights. Araceli, you may now begin your presentation. So thank you for the introduction and thank you for being here today. Today we'll talk about how HEMD can help streamline your variant classification workflow. And so today we'll start with an introduction to the Human Gene Mutation Database and look at some of the advantages of HEMD professionals. Uh, we'll then look at some examples of use cases that many variant scientists like you often encounter that illustrate how HEMD is a valuable tool to help you with your variant research. Uh, we'll then end with a Q&A session. So what is the Human Gene Mutation Database? It is an expert curated database of human germline mutations coming from peer-reviewed published journals. These are both de novo and inherited mutations that have significant evidence of pathogenicity. And so here on the right-hand side, uh, you can see a Venn diagram comparing the content between HGMT, OMEN, and a Climbar. You can see that all of the content from OMEN is in HGMD, and nearly 65% of the ClinVar entries are also found within HGMD. Now, uh, we like to say that if it's not published, it's not in HGMD. So keeping this in mind, uh, this remaining 73,000 of ClinVar entries are likely not in HGMD because ClinVar does not necessarily require users who are submitting their clinical assertions about a variant to have specific guidelines for evidence to support that assertion. Now you can also see that um, HGMD has a large amount of content that is not available in either OMEN or ClinVar. Now, one thing to note is that HGMD is for germline mutations only, not for somatic. So HGMD is a great tool when you're asking the question, does this human germline mutation cause disease? Now, many of you are probably aware that there is a public version of H H um, GMD. And so here, uh, let's take a look at the advantages of having a professional version. Unlike the public version, which is three years out of date, HGMD Professional is updated quarterly with information coming from more than 2,000 different journals and is carried out manually by genetic experts who read the literature and bring in the information. And so here on the right, uh, you can see the statistics between uh, this year and the fourth quarter release of 2021 for HGMD. And you can see that there is quite a bit of content that was just added between uh, these two quarters. Uh, currently, HGMD includes annotations for more than 372,000 variants, all kinds of mutations, representing a growth of about 9,500 mutations within one quarter. So you can see that um, having the professional version compared to the public version um, gives you the most up-to-date clinical information for these variants. Now, HGMD entries include uh, the first published example of the mutation and the pathogenic effect. And certain mutations may also include additional reports like functional studies or additional phenotypes if these reports enhance the original entry. And so there are a couple of ways that you can access uh, this information. HGMD can be accessed um, online and with, H with the um, HGMD professional version, you have advanced uh, search capabilities that are not necessarily available with the public version. So as you can see here, um, you have the ability to search by gene or mutation. Uh, you can do phenotype searches. 
And you can also um, look at an overview of um, the mutations for a specific gene uh, to get an idea of the number of mutations by variant type. In addition to the online version, a downloadable uh, version of HMD Professional is also available. So if you prefer to have the data in tab delimited files or VCF files, that's also available. Now we're going to look at some examples that illustrate how HCMD is a particularly useful tool during your variant classification workflow. Specifically, we'll look at how convenient HCMD is when researching a variant's clinical significance, ways in which visualizing variants through HCMD can provide information about the allele of interest that you're looking at, and then we'll also look at ways to identify genes associated with specific phenotypes, and then how you can utilize some of the advanced capabilities to design an NGS panel. Now, when it comes to interpreting variants, uh, legacy and alternative naming schemes can make researching a variant's clinical significance kind of difficult. So let's say that you're given uh, this variant in gene Serpina A, Serpina 1, uh, to look over. Now, a workflow for this might be the following. Using the Human Genome Variation Society, HGBS, monoclature uh, for this variant, the first thing you do is go to ClinVar. But because you don't necessarily want to take the entries in ClinVar at face value, you dig a little deeper into the entry and see the literature associated for that variant. However, uh, looking at the Quimblar entry for this um, serine at codon 6 leucine change, uh, there's no mention of an alternative names or other schemes. So using this uh, literature information uh, that's associated with the Quimblar entry, you go to PubMed to investigate it further. And so looking at the associated paper, um, the only uh, serine to leucine change mentioned is happening at codon minus 19. In addition to this, uh, you notice that um, this is somewhat also associated with something called PIV uh, Rexam. So at this point, you are not seeing any mention of a serine 6 leucine. So the next thing you do is go to the gene review for uh, Serpina 1, where you confirm that alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency is the associated phenotype, and you get a little bit of background information about this gene. Uh, you see that variants were initially described based on electrophoretic protein variants with the prefix PI, uh, denoting protease inhibitor. So essentially, they would add this PI in conjunction with the name of the location where this variant was identified. And all of this was before um, they knew that Jopina 1 was the associated gene. So here, not only do you have what appears to be um, a legacy name uh, where the codon is different, but you also have this um, alternative naming uh, scheme based on the location of where the variant was found. However, at this point, uh, you're still not quite sure that you can confirm that uh, serine 6 leucine is in fact the same variant as serine minus 19 uh, leucine. And so um, you look at the OMEN entry and you get uh, some similar information. The same uh, literature is associated uh, the same names are given. Nonetheless, you still don't have any confirmation that um, this is the same variant you're looking for. And so at this point, uh, you suspect that it is, but to be certain, you would have to do uh, additional digging to confirm that the information you are finding is relevant to the variant you're interested in. And so overall, you can see how time-consuming this workflow can be. Now, let's look at how using HCMD as your first step in your variant classification workflow provides you with that background information 
and saves you the time spent researching these um, legacy and alternative naming schemes. And so with HGMD, uh, you can search for gene, uh, Serpina 1, and look at uh, missense of variants. And so here within uh, the first entry, you see the variant you are interested in, steering 6 leucine. And conveniently, HGMD has a special column that describes the legacy change. So here you can see um, that there is an offset of 24 amino acids explaining why you are seeing this minus a 19. This was probably part of a translocation signal or something, and the original group studying this variant started counting 24 codons downstream. And so you have confirmation that uh, serine 6 leucine is in fact the same variant as serine minus 19 leucine. Uh, you can click on this um, HGMD assertion to view the variant entry. And so in this uh, variant entry, you get confirmation that the associated disease or phenotype is alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. HGMD considers this variant a, a disease-causing mutation. And then, again, you have the codon number, and the legacy uh, codon number is also available in this view. You also have um, the primary literature reference for the first time this variant was published as well as an additional reference. And so at this point, you can be confident that when you are talking about this serine 6 leucine, it's the same thing mentioned in this primary uh, literature. And this is because the genetic experts who are reviewing the information and updating the content within HMD will not associate literature if there is any ambiguity. Uh, they will follow up with the authors of the publication if there are any questions. So they have done the background digging for you, saving you time so that you can move forward with your research. Now, let's look at another uh, use case. Let's say that you are given uh, this variant in gene uh, GME. So here you're looking at a arginine uh, 297 glutamine change. So let's go ahead and search this in HGMD. And so when you log in to um, HGMD uh, Professional Online, uh, this is what the homepage looks like. Here you have the uh, current version. Uh, you have a list of the contents that are available, and any important announcements or updates will also be listed. Now, there are a number of ways to search. Uh, you can search by gene. So here we click on gene. We'll get uh, the option to search by gene. So here we can enter our gene of interest. And then use this drop down menu to select the parameter that we're interested in. And then submit the query. Once we do that, we can simply select our gene. And so with uh, gene search, uh, you can look at all the mutations within uh, gene GNE, and then you can narrow down by a mutation type of interest. So if you're interested in this sense mutations, you can click on that, and then uh, scroll down until you find the one that you're interested in. Now, another way is to search uh, by mutation which directly pulls up the variant information. So here we click on mutation. Uh, you can search by codon. If you have the HGMD accession, uh, you can directly look it up. Uh, you can search also by dbSNP as well. Now for today, we are going to uh, search by chromosomal coordinates. And so using this little search bar up here, you can either type in or paste in your coordinates. So I'm going to go ahead and paste those in.
and then use uh, this drop-down menu to specify how we are searching. So we're going to search by uh, HG38 coordinates. And then click on Submit. And so this directly um, pulls up the variant you are interested in. Uh, here you can click on the gene uh, symbol and get the same spectrum of mutations that you get uh, when you search by the gene uh, function. Uh, you also have the option to link out to uh, dbSNP. And um, you can also review the HGMD accession for this variant. So let's go ahead and do that. And so looking at this accession, uh, you can see that the associated phenotype is Silaria. The HGMD entry is citing this as a disease causing mutation. And then uh, you don't see anything in the codon number about a legacy naming scheme. Here in the literature citation section, uh, you can see that there are a couple of different papers listed. Uh, the, the first report was in a Portuguese girl who had the clinical biochemical and molecular characteristics. And in addition to the primary literature, uh, these papers are also included because the reviewers found that these papers added useful information. Now, something that users like you find particularly helpful is this comments uh, note section. And so here, reviewers will add notes to help clarify things. So as an example, uh, we are looking at a 297 codon change. Uh, within this Leroy paper, it indicates that it's a 266 codon change. And then looking at uh, the note for another publication, uh, the reviewers let you know that this paper also reports it the same way and gives the ensemble transcript. Now, another thing that is helpful is that many times the comments will tell you where to look for the variant. So if it's only listed in the supplemental table or the supplemental data, um, it'll point you in that direction. And so this shows the value of having someone manually look at the information. Not only are they reviewing the body of the text, but they are also able to look at graphs, figures, supplemental tables, and they point you to where they found that key piece of information for the variant. Now with this information, uh, you know that there is a reporting scheme on uh, different transcripts than the one that you've been given. So HMD has this section called Additional Predicted HGVS Descriptions feature. And so if you click on the little arrows, um, you can see the drop-down menu appears. And here it lists all of the rest of transcripts the HGVS transcriptions, as well as the ensemble transcripts. And so this uh, use case highlights how reviewing the HGMD entry first gives you key insights that will, that will be helpful as you continue with your literature review. So if you were to look for additional literature uh, for this a specific variant, uh, you would know that there is a possibility that it is reported in a number of different ways. So you would need to be aware when you are doing that search and how you form that search. So we've looked at how HMD can help you with your variant uh, research and save you time along the way. Now we'll look at some use cases for downloading and visualizing HMD data. So when you have a professional license for HDMD download, there are, there are several different files that are available to you. Uh, here highlighted is the zipped file for uh, the VCF for HDMD professional in HG38, but it's also available in HG19 as well. So before moving to the use case, I'll briefly go over how you would go about uploading this data for visualization. And so here you would download the VCF file and then upload the VCF file to a browser. For this, many users like you will either use the uh, Integrative Genomics Viewer, IGV, or the UC Santa Cruz uh, Genome Browser. 
And so to give you an idea, this is what uh, the upload of the HEMG Professional BCF looks like in IGV. Uh, if we zoom in on the information here, uh, this is information parsed from the VCF file. Uh, you can see uh, the gene, uh, the phenotype, the uh, HGVS nomenclature. So you can use this to get uh, key information. And this is what the upload of the HGMD professional VCF looks like in the UC Santa Cruz uh, genome browser. This allows you to see the nature of the variant change. So you can see if you have um, a deletion, uh, for example, or if you have um, an insertion. You can also see if you have a uh, substitution um, as well. So it provides you with just a little bit more uh, information. And then uh, this is what the parse information from the VCF would look like in the UC Santa Cruz genome browser. So let's go ahead and see how we can use the HGMD uh, VCF download. So many users like you, uh, when they download the HGMD VCF file, will often use it during their uh, secondary analysis. They will refer to the VCF from HGMD and annotate their variants. So let's say that you did sequencing and generated a large list of um, variants. Now you want to narrow down this list to look at those that are most likely to be clinically significant. And so one of the things that you can do is filter by things like allele frequency or quality matrix. With the HGMD VCF download, you can also annotate with um, HGMD and use the annotations to filter down to a smaller list of variants to look at it in more details. Now, another use case for the H GMD VCF download is for visualization purposes. So why is visualization helpful? Sometimes uh, you want to see what's in what we call the genomic neighborhood. This can be visualizing a VCF track for your variants of interest. And by using the VCF download, you're able to see if there are entries within HMG that are at the same codon and see if they are marked as disease-causing mutations or supposed disease-causing mutations. And so, uh, for example, I have uploaded uh, the variant track of for my variant of interest and the um, HEMG VCF into the UC Santa Cruz uh, genome browser. And so here we go to the genome. You can see uh, both uh, the HEMG VCF file and then um, the file for our variant of interest. And so looking at the browser, uh, we have our variant of interest. Uh, right here, and then we can see that there are HGMD entries at the same location. So if we look at these um, entries, and we click on the information, uh, you can see that um, HGMD is citing this as a disease cause mutation. So having this uh, visual representation is quite helpful for many users like you. Now, other times you may find visualization helpful if you are looking at a particular region of the gene. Um, so for example, if you are looking at uh, frame shifts at the three prime end, and you have something that's past the boundary of nonsense mediated decay, you need additional evidence from the literature or from functional studies showing that that last part of the protein has significance if it is cut off. So being able to see visually an HMD track showing other reported disease cost mutations in that location will point you to some of that evidence. Now, having the HMD track loaded can help confirm your secondary analysis and make sure that it is accurately uh, calling or describing variants. And so let's say that you uploaded your variant track into the uh, UC Santa Cruz genome browser. Uh, your variant of interest here in purple it's within the APC gene, and it's in a region where 
um, there is a little bit of repetition with this AG, AG motif. Uh, you can see that there is a little dash on top followed by a GA on the bottom, indicating that this is an insertion of a GA. Now by loading the HGMD uh, track on top, which is what all of these uh, variants on the top are, uh, you can see that there is an insertion of a GA in blue that's nearby or in the genomic neighborhood. As a person reviewing this variant and maybe examining the bed or band files or the reads, you might suspect that this insertion is in fact supposed to be called here, a few bases away downstream, because in repetitive regions, sometimes there can be changes in how it is represented in the BCS versus HGVS. In this case, uh, you would know to follow up maybe with finger sequencing for confirmation to make sure that uh, this is in fact the variant you want to look at and that it doesn't need to be altered in your secondary analysis to reflect something that has been reported in the literature as a disease causing mutation. And so overall, you can see how having this visualization makes this type of analysis faster. Now that we have looked at some of the applications for using the um, HGMD ECF download, Let's look at how you can utilize HGMD when you are interested in identifying genes that associate with a specific phenotype of interest. Um, so for example, um, let's say that you are on the research side and you are interested in discovering what genes are associated with bipolar disorder. With HGMD, you can search by phenotype. And so here you can do a uh, Boolean uh, search where it will pull in the actual entries with the term bipolar uh, disorder and search within HGMD phenotypes. So you can quickly find for the associated bipolar disorder phenotypes within HGMD a list of genes to follow up on. Now, this is going to provide um, a good place to start as this provides um, some guidance into where um, to um, look at. Now, let's look at how you can utilize the content within HMD to design a panel based on a phenotype. Now, let's say that you want to design a panel for cardiomyopathy. Um, so in this case, uh, you would use the advanced uh, search. And so with that, uh, you would get um, a list of variants within HGMD that are associated with cardiomyopathy, which can then be used um, for your panel design. So let's go ahead and do this in the um, HGMD professional um, online version. So here, we're going to go ahead and click on the advanced section. And then within advanced, we're going to select Nucleotide Substitution Plus. And so today, uh, we are interested in searching by uh, disease or phenotype. But uh, to get a look at these different parameters, you can see that you can search uh, by different things, such as gene symbol, uh, dbSNP, just to give you a couple of examples. Now you can search by um, functional elements. So if you want to look at variants within known transcription binding sites, for example, uh, this can be helpful. You can do a, a motif search. If you're looking for uh, splice, specific splice variants or regulatory regions, so you can also search for those as well. Now over here, um, you can see what is going to be um, produced by the search. And so here you can select uh, the different outputs, the information that you want to receive back. And so right now we have um, many things highlighted, but you can manually 
select and deselect um, whatever it is that you're interested. In this case, I'm just going to go ahead and select them all um, to get as much information as possible. And so going back down here, uh, since we are interested in um, searching by a disease or a phenotype, we're going to go ahead and use this search bar to enter um, our disease of interest. And so here uh, we are going to specify that we're interested in cardiomyopathy. And then we're going to go ahead and submit our query. And so this pulls the table that you saw uh, earlier that lists um, the different variants within HGMT that are associated with cardiomyopathy. And then here, each column is going to represent the outputs that we um, selected. So you have information on the TB SNP, uh, the gene, the HGBS, and then you have additional information um, as well. And so you can download a uh, bed file uh, for this table that you can upload into the UC Santa Cruz genome browser, for example. And so with this, you can visualize across all the associated genes for cardiomyopathy and known variants. Uh, if you then wanted to design targets for a panel, you can make sure that they are covering all of these associated um, HEMD uh, entries. You also have the option to export and save this information that's in a tabular format by clicking right here to save it as a uh, text file and then use it for downstream applications. And so today we looked at the utility of HCMD for variant classification. You saw how it can speed up your workflow process by giving you information about historical or legacy names and different transcripts, for example. So you can quickly get uh, through your liter literature search and get to your answer. Uh, you just like you can use the data within HCMD to visualize or to annotate and help with other aspects of variant analysis. Um, HMD has many different options for searching information, like by phenotype, for example. And you can also utilize the information within HMD to help design a panel based on a phenotype like we saw today. Uh, thank you for your time and attention. And now we're open for any questions that you may have. Thank you, Araceli, for your informative presentation. We will now start the live Q&A portion of the webinar. If you have a question you'd like to ask, please do so now. Just click on the Ask a Question box located on the far left of your screen. We'll answer as many of your questions as we have time for. So let's get started. Our first question is, how frequently is HGMD Pro updated? How does this compare to the public version? Another great question. So HGMD Pro is updated quarterly, whereas the public version is uh, less up-to-date um, so I believe it's around um, three years um, behind uh, the um, HGMD Pro. Great, thank you. Another question we have here asks, does HGMD provide information about polymorphisms in genes? Yes, for a polymorphism to be included in HGMD, there must be some sort of literature evidence showing a link to a disease or a phenotype. Great. Another question we have here. Is there an uploadable VCF with more information included from the HGMD entry? Uh, yes. With the download of genome tracks, uh, which you can license, uh, you have a number of different files that are specifically formatted to um, for upload into the UC Santa Cruz uh, genome browser. And there are different ways that you can view the HGMD entry, either by phenotype, disease mutation, functional um, polymorphism, just to give you a couple of examples. Great, thank you. Next question, which genome build is used for HGMD? So currently HGMD has been updated for um, HG38, but there is also support for HG19 as well. Great, thank you. Are there any other ways of accessing HGMD data other than through HGMD Public or HGMD Pro? 
So HGMD data can be accessed through QCI Interpret. So with QCI Interpret, uh, you can see the HGMD Pro entry for every variant in your BCF file that goes through um, QCI Interpret and for which there is an uh, HGMD accession available. Great, thank you. And it looks like we have time for one more question here. And this one asks, why are there articles for a specific variant that have not been captured in HGMD, but can be found using other search tools like PubMed? That's a great question. So the aim of HGMD is to show the primary report, uh, the first report where the variant uh, is published in the literature. And additional articles are only added if there's something new or important to the entry, like an updated phenotype or functional evidence about uh, protein structure, for example. And so here, the goal of HEMD is not necessarily to return all of the possible information available for the variant, but to give you key background information that is important. Wonderful. Well, thank you again, Araceli, for your time today and your important research. We would also like to thank LabRoots and our sponsor, Kyogen, for underwriting today's educational webcast. Before we go, I'd like to thank the audience for joining us today and for their interesting questions. Questions we did not have time for today and those submitted during the on-demand period will be addressed by the speaker via the contact information you provided at the time of registration. This webcast can be viewed on demand. LabRoots will alert you via email when it's available for replay. We encourage you to share that email with your colleagues who may have missed today's live event. Until next time, take care, everyone. Goodbye.